Hi, and welcome to another C++ Noob to Pro tutorial from Someone9031. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys a bit more about classes in C++ and going over some stuff I did not mention in the last tutorial. So, the first thing I'm going to be going over is um, methods or member functions. So, uh, what we've done here is we've created um, the class rectangle. This is from the last tutorial, a rectangle class for member functions or methods, uh, constructor, deconstructor, calc area, and calc perim. So, um, along with these member functions, we have put in their definition, which is these code, this code block. So that basically creates what is called an inline function. So I haven't talked about that yet, so I'm going to be going over that right now. So as you can see here, we have a very simple program. If you run this, we will find it and ask for um, two numbers, and then it'll add those numbers together and output it. So, very simple program. We have an add function, some input. What we're really interested in here is this, the function call. So here we've called to the function add, which is up here. And then we fed it two parameters, input one and input two, the user's input. So what this is called is pass by value. So this, it takes this value, it makes a copy of it, and it passes that value, the copy, into here. So then it does the same thing for this. And then once this function is done executing, on this return thing, it will pass um, this, copy this A back into here, A plus B back into here. So that's a lot of copying around, input and out, with lots of parameters. So if you call this function a lot, it's going to be a performance decrease because of all the things you need to pass in. So that's where in, uh, inline functions come in. So inline functions, to declare one, you put inline in front of there. So what an inline function is, it's not a real function. It takes the code inside the function, and whenever it's called, it will replace that code with the code inside the function. So here, it would just replace it with that. It would replace um, our call to add with a plus b. So with small, tiny little functions, two, three, one, line, uh, not called very much, in line functions will give you a performance boost. But if it's a massive function and you call it a lot, um, it will actually decrease the performance because it makes a massive executable because it keeps having to replace the code. So that will actually decrease the performance. So that's basically it about inline functions. So let's now talk about what this has to do with classes. So when you have this, this is an inline function. If you come over here, it says is inline is true. So this function is inline. Um, so sometimes this could be good, sometimes it's not good. So most people just prefer to get rid of this definition in the class and then just give it a prototype. Just like all the other functions we've done before, prototype, just return type, name, parameters, and then semicolon. So just turn all of these into um, prototypes. So all of these are now prototypes. They don't have a definition. They just have um, these uh, tells the compiler what's going to return any parameters and stuff. So we're going to have to declare these down here, just like with um, prototypes, normal function prototypes. We're going to have to declare them eventually. So we're going to have to do that down here. So the first thing you put is um, the type that's going to return, so we're going to do our constructor first, so that doesn't have a return type, so do nothing there. Then you put the class that it's in, so the compiler knows you're not making a new function, you're taking um, something from this rectangle class and you're declaring it, and it also means that you can access these, everything else that's inside the um, rectangle class, because um, we put rectangle here, then you follow it with um, 
a scope operator, which is two colons, which tells you your, which tells the compiler you're inside the class, and then the name of the method, followed by the declaration. So that's basically how you do it. You do the same thing with everything else, and note that um, we can use this length and width because we are inside the rectangle class. Now, deconstructor, this isn't going to do anything, but we have to make one anyways. Um, now, we're going to get to calc area. Now, this is something that actually has a return value. So, we're going to have to put a return value first, then the name of the class, then the name of uh, the method. And it doesn't matter what order you do this, and you can do this in any order. Um, return length times width and then one last one for perimeter and then we're going to return length plus length plus plus width plus width and there we go there's also something else um, so that's it for that and then there's also something else I'm going to talk about it's uh, constant functions or methods so if you declare a method to be constant it means the method can't change any part of the class so um, to make a method constant you have to put const after the name of the method so here um, we have to put const there too. Const. Let's make this one const too. So you make any class const or constant if um, it can't modify. If it like it's not going to modify in any way any part of it. So calc area, it's not going to be like setting any of these values. It's just going to take those, multiply them together, and return the value. So that can be um, a valid constant um, thing. But if we had something called set length, that can't be constant because um, it's setting the length. So declaring, uh, you should declare as many methods as constant as you possibly can. So anything that can't possibly modify part of the class should be constant. So this helps you to um, flatten out the bugs and stuff. So if you accidentally had an if statement and accidentally used um, a assignment operator instead of a um, equality operator um, so you assign something when you're supposed to be comparing something um, you can't legally do that because it's a constant um, function so it means it can't modify anything so the last thing I'm going to be talking to you guys about is something I talked about a little bit at the end of the last tutorial. So it's access modifiers, public, private, um, protected. So public, for the sake of simplicity, because this is our first class, um, I've made everything here public, which means um, you can access it from outside the class, access anything. Um, so as this isn't good programming practice because um, you can accidentally change something. So what programmers usually do is they make uh, member variables private, but then they make all these functions public. So um, if we had this as private, see here, our assignment wouldn't work because you can't assign the width because it's private. Main can't actually access that. So to access it, you'd have to have um, something called an access method. So something that's going to return the value because it's not allowed to see length. So we're going to have to set, sorry, get length. This should be constant too. And then one, get width should be constant as well. And then here we're going to declare those double get rectangle get length constant and then here we're going to 
return length. So because main can't view it, we call just call the get length method, which will access length for it because it's inside the class and it's allowed. So get width. This should be constant as well. Return width. And here's one more thing about constants. If you set it to const here, you have to put it here as well. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. And then we are also going to have to set this at some point. So we also need a set length and set width. So these are going to be void because it's not going to return anything. It's just going to set something. So void set length. And it's going to take um, a parameter, which is what you want to set the length to. So L. Now this can't be constant because it's setting something. Same for width. Set double W. I have to declare these down here as well. Double rectangle. Sorry. Void rectangle. Set length. Um, and it's going to take double L. And then it's going to set length to L. So length. L and then void rectangle set width it's going to take W and then set width to W so that is our class that's done so now we're going to have to modify the code down here because none of this will work so we're going to have to do r dot set length set width actually and we're going to pass in, say, 3. So we're going to set the width to 3. So this is our parameter here. And then r.setLength. We're going to pass in 4. And then here we can't use this legally. So we're going to have to put get length. So that'll get the length and put it there. And then r dot get width. So those are simple modifications we have to do to the program to make it private, but it's worth it for the benefits and stuff. So let's just wait for this to build. We can test the program. Here we go. Um, so just as we expected it. And the one last access modifier is protected and um, that really doesn't matter right now we're going to be talking about more about that when we get to um, inheritance so um, this concludes the tutorial um, we'll be taking a short break from classes and stuff we'll be doing other things we need to cover like pointers and stuff we'll be getting back to classes soon so um, if you like this video please subscribe and thanks for watching